Who wants to get some pumpkins for the party? asked Daddy Pig. Me, shouted Pepper, and me, agreed George. I'll just get the camper van ready, replied Daddy Pig. We'll need more room for all the pumpkins. And off he went. Daddy Pig drove the camper van up to the house and Pepper and George jumped in. Don't be too long, said Mummy Pig. We still need to decorate the house. We'll be quick, they all shouted and off they went. It didn't take too long to reach the pumpkin patch and Pepper and George hopped out eagerly. Wow! exclaimed Pepper. Look at all those pumpkins! You pick them and I'll load them into the van, replied Daddy Pig. And so Pepper and George got to work. George cried Pepper, but it was too late. George had fallen into a rotten pumpkin and got it stuck on his head. Pepper helped to pull it off and they continued. done said daddy pig I think we have enough now let's go home so they all climbed into the van but when daddy pig tried to start the engine it made a terrible noise he got out to take a closer look I'm afraid the motor needs fixing daddy sighed and grandpa dog is a bit tied up at the moment we'll just have to wait for him but we need to get home to help mummy decorate the house cried Peppa but just then they heard a familiar whistle. It's Thomas, shouted Peppa. Thomas stopped. Oh dear, are you stuck? he asked. Yes, replied Peppa. We need to get our pumpkins home. No problem, he replied. You can pop them in my empty truck and I'll give you a lift. Oh, thank you, smiled Daddy Pig. And they unloaded all the pumpkins into Thomas's truck. You two go with Thomas and I'll wait for Grandpa Dog, said Daddy Pig. So Pepper and George hopped into Thomas's truck. See you later, shouted Daddy Pig, and they waved. They were nearly home when disaster struck. A log slipped off a pile of wood and fell under the pumpkin truck. The truck derailed, spilling the pumpkins all over the road. Oh no, cried Peppa. What are we going to do? The truck is too heavy for us to put back on the rails. Don't worry, replied Thomas. Jack is on his way and he'll help us. Sure enough, Jack appeared. Pepper and George moved the log away from the track and Jack began to heave Thomas's truck back onto the rails. He also managed to scoop all the pumpkins up and put them back into the truck. Jack said Thomas gratefully. No problem, said Jack, and off he went. Pepper and George climbed back into Thomas's truck and they continued their journey. Mummy Pig was relieved to see them when they arrived and they unloaded all the pumpkins. <music> Mummy Pig then thanked Thomas for his help. You're very welcome, he replied and disappeared. Luckily, Grandpa Dog had fixed the camper van and Daddy Pig could drive home while Mummy, Peppa and George decorated the house. 
Wow, he cried, the house looks amazing. Well done, everyone. We've just got enough time to get changed before the party. Thank you for watching our story. Here's another one you may have missed. It was getting closer to Halloween and Queen Elsa and Princess Anna were putting the final touches to the castle with the Halloween decorations. I think that's everything, said Queen Elsa. But it does feel like something's missing. Well, let's see, said Princess Anna. We have bones or skeleton, spiders and spider webs, pumpkins. I know what's missing, exclaimed Olaf the snowman. We have no bats. Oh, I'm not sure about bats, said Queen Elsa. I'm a little bit frightened of them. Oh, they're okay, smiled Olaf. If you just have a few and not too many. How are we going to get bats? asked Princess Anna. Well, I could use a little magic, said Queen Elsa hesitantly. What a great idea, exclaimed Olaf. Real bats. Just don't have too many. I'll try not to, said Queen Elsa, and she began to use her magical powers. Very soon, bats started to circle around the castle. But more and more bats began to appear. I think that's enough bats now, said a worried Princess Anna. Oh no, I can't stop them. They're out of control, exclaimed Queen Elsa. What are we going to do, said a worried Olaf. Deeper in the forest, Thomas was steaming along, heading back to Tidmer Sheds. Hang on a minute, he exclaimed. Why are there so many bats suddenly? Hmm, he said, I think they're coming from the castle. I'd better investigate, he thought. When he arrived at the castle, he met a worried Princess Anna and an even more worried Queen Elsa. Can you help us, Thomas? We don't know what to do, cried Olaf. Ah, oh, don't worry, said Thomas. I know somebody who'd be able to help. She can talk to animals and birds. I passed her earlier. I'll go and fetch her. I'm sure she won't mind. And with that, he steamed off in the direction of the forest. Very soon, he came upon Princess Sophia on her favourite swing. Hello, Thomas, greeted Princess Sophia. You look worried. Whatever is the matter? So Thomas told Princess Sophia all about the uncontrollable bats. Of course I'll come and help, she smiled and climbed aboard Thomas's truck. When they arrived at the castle, their bats were everywhere. Oh my, exclaimed Princess Sophia, they're going crazy. She looked up and called out to one of the bats. The bat landed on her hand and she talked quietly to it. The bat seemed to understand and quickly flew back to the others. Very soon, the bats started to disappear until there were just a few circling around. Thank you so much, said Queen Elsa to Princess Sophia. We only wanted a few to fly around. They won't cause you any bother, smiled Princess Sophia. When you want them to go, just clap your hands twice and they will return home. They are very intelligent creatures, she smiled. Shall I take you back now, asked Thomas. Yes, please, said Princess Sophia. But if you need me any time, just call, she said. And with that, she climbed aboard Thomas and disappeared back into the forest with a wave. Thank you for watching our story. To see more, click on any of these clips. And if you haven't already subscribed, go on. Why not do so now? See you soon.